we can do an investment prior to a validation of the technology. So we will start with a POC and then see um, that we're fascinated about the technology and we see a, like a very disruptive approach. Hey. Hadar Pod, thank you so much for joining me on 20 Minute Leaders. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> so great to have you here. Are you, you're calling from Tel Aviv right now? No, actually, I'm calling from Kiryat Ono, where I live uh, now. But uh, previously, I've all, I lived for many years in uh, Tel Aviv and prior to that in Jerusalem and prior to that in uh, New York. I was actually born in New York. Amazing. Hadar, you have a very unique job, um, which I think most entrepreneurs and most people around me aren't even aware that exists, especially in the industry that you're in. What is the title that you, that you hold within Porsche? Uh, so I work at a subsidiary of Porsche called Porsche Digital, and I'm a director there and leading the activities, the innovation activities and scouting in Israel. So leading the innovation and scouting activities in Israel for uh, one of the most successful automobile companies in the world, the subsidiary of it that is intended for ventures, for innovation and, and, uh, and creation. Why does a car manufacturing company, luxury car company, need an arm of innovation and ventures? Um, so I, I'm sure that all of your viewers are aware that Israel is, a, is not a startup nation, but now is becoming a scale-up nation. And a lot of the technologies that are super relevant, not only for an organization as an organization, but also as a mobility player or a tech giant, uh, are coming from Israel. So a lot of machine what is the learning and scale-up nation and startup nation, by the way. So you're not familiar? I, I, I need to know. Okay, so there's a shift in the mindset of. Uh, of now leaders and, uh, and investors and entrepreneurs in Israel trying to uh, not just promote Israeli founders to start companies and sell them re relatively quickly, but rather to expand them and not to sell them as fast as they can, but to build big, big successful companies. So the, I, I am uh, personally very like in favor of this uh, shift, a uh, paradigm shift, and I hope that we'll see more and more companies uh, scaling in Israel and not uh, selling too fast their companies. So just for context, for whoever doesn't, doesn't understand, you know, the, so we had the startup nation, this wonderful, miraculous idea of, of Israel, this tiny hub of, of creativity and innovation by force. People are, people are forced to be innovative and creative from a very young age, uh, generally attributed to the army. And then we received some, critics, some criticism as the exit nation because we developed the, the amazing technologies, sell them short instead of trying to grow them. But recently we've seen some incredible innovators uh, like Fiverr, Lemonade, Wix, uh, Mobileye, um, uh, and so many more, uh, Trip Action, Stipalti, that are now unicorns, uh, uh, ways, of course, uh, and so scale up nation. Okay, now back to Porsche. Yeah, so we opened our facility uh, officially in 2018. Prior to that, uh, our uh, leadership basically came and was starting to develop a, a, a very big interest toward uh, the Israeli market and like uh, the innovation coming from here. Uh, and one thing led to another, and they eventually decided that they need uh, permanent people here, an official office, and, and somebody that will pursue uh, only this activity. Uh, I was lucky enough and privileged enough uh, to be introduced to Porsche via Grove, which is a prominent uh, VC in Israel. And no. basically, yeah, so uh, uh, Porsche invested in Grove prior to, to me and my colleague. Oh, really? Okay, Tony. I didn't know that. Yeah, and they were looking for a person in Israel. We were connected. I was quite hesitant why Porsche is uh, reaching out to me. I had actually uh, an interview at my, uh, my former uh, office at Deloitte. Basically met with them. Didn't know what they want, but was truly excited about their idea of uh, developing something in Israel and, uh, and seeking Israeli innovation and with the hopes of deploying it. Um, yeah, so one thing led to another. I joined in late 2018. Uh, basically, our office has two core activities. One is uh, tech scouting, not just for the sake of doing projects or POCs, but for the, the, the sake of deployment. 
Right. Um, so we the range. What does that mean? Deployment. When when you think of deployment, what does that mean? Does it actually mean integrating technology within the cars themselves? Definitely. So this is this is one, but also in the on the enterprise level and or production, uh, we seek to see uh, technologies being uh, integrated into our facilities, into our computers, into everything. Um, so we uh, work together with our colleagues at uh, Porsche AG, the, the parent company. Uh, in Weissach, where the R&D center in Stuttgart, and we uh, basically try to analyze potential companies. We have uh, basically a dual methodology of scouting, uh, both a pull and a push. So uh, the most preferred ways is to get companies to get a specific request from a business unit to really understand a specific need, and then to go and analyze uh, the most relevant uh, companies and then to bring them to the table and potentially uh, do a POC. And once the POC is... So is this is like a top-down approach where you have a business unit within Porsche that says, hey, we have this problem. Can we do some scouting and see if there's any interesting early, middle, or late-stage startups, perhaps in Israel, that are working in this space? And then we can approach them proactively and try to get some sort of collaboration. That, that's, the, that's the way that you were uh, referring to? Yeah, so this is the primary way where we see a very high conversion rate because it, inherently we'll, we will have a business unit, we'll have a project lead, a budget and everything. But definitely we, we, we are extremely proactive in trying to advocate new companies or uh, new uh, business models uh, that are particularly in interesting for a specific unit. And sometimes a unit cannot really articu articulate themselves, okay, we acknowledge this technology, sometimes they, are not, they, are, they will not be aware of what exactly is in the market. And, and this is why we also focus on, on meeting constantly with companies and with VCs and with major stakeholders and trying to uh, be ahead of the game. Uh, basically, so this is one arm uh, we have conducted in 2019 over 10 POCs. We deployed several wow. technologies. Uh, 2020 had a rocky start with COVID, but we were uh, thankful Just enough to, to conduct uh, various uh, POCs and deployments. And uh, okay. yeah, so we're, we're, we're working hard. It's a small team, but we're trying to do a lot. I mean, uh, that the whole investment side, right? Where you're actually a venture arm that is making active investments in companies. So basically, uh, Porsche Ventures uh, is the, the, the CVC, the strategic uh, uh, investor arm of uh, Porsche. Uh, we uh, invest in four different locations uh, around the globe in the US, Germany, China, and Israel. Uh, my colleague, uh, Talia, is uh, more focusing on the investment side. I'm on the tech scouting, but obviously, we do everything together. So, companies. On the what? That, Sorry. Uh, uh, you're she, focusing she's doing on I'm doing the tech scouting. So tech basically scouting, doing, okay. Yeah, 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 and innovation, doing all of the projects. But it goes hand in hand because every investment, uh, we can do an investment prior to a validation of the technology. So we will start with a POC and then see um, that we're fascinated about the technology and we see a, like right. a very disruptive approach. Or, and then we, we will uh, potentially uh, proceed to, to analyzing a potential investment. So you will, and you will only invest then in companies that are, specifically relevant to your domain, your expertise, and, and technologies that you can validate as Porsche, right? So definitely we are always looking how to push the boundaries and do new, new types of uh, mobility and do things that are not just within the car. Um, but definitely we have our, our core activity, but uh, there are new uh, topics and new things that we're looking at. So constantly looking and trying to innovate also with, within the topics that are are relevant for us. Okay, so so there, talk to me a little bit about about how you got into this. It's not that ordinary to uh, to meet somebody who's working on the venture and innovation arm of a car manufacturing company, a leading one, especially at that Porsche. And um, so it's it's a very very cool job. But but I'd love to know uh, who holds that job. So Deloitte, ITT, uh, a lawyer for many years. Um, who who are you? Uh, it's a tough question. I don't know. I'm uh, not only my job roles. I think I'm a person who has a lot of other, uh, I don't know, passions and interests. But uh, I don't know. Where do you want me to start from? I want to start from the passions. What What are you actually passionate about? So you've got, you you, you did you did a lot of uh, a lot. You have a lot of background in in the tech space now from a lot of different point uh, angles coming into it. What are you really really excited about? Um basically pushing innovation and trying to 
um, help big companies succeed through uh, collaboration with startups. So obviously I'm a big passionate, I'm a big ambassador of the Israeli Startup Nation and uh, yes. trying to support Israeli companies and founders, uh, but also want to try to help big corporations understand and acknowledge that they can't solve everything internally. They need to utilize external technologies to solve big problem and to, to make a big impact. Um, so yeah, uh, passionate about impact and helping out. That the ITT. Was the ITT uh, sort of being an, an ambassador and representative of the startup nation? So it's a good question. So at my time, it was uh, called Deloitte Inno uh, Innovation Tech Terminal. Uh, now it is uh, rebranded as uh, Deloitte Catalyst. So uh, me and my, uh, my former uh, colleague, Amit Arel, basically joined forces to establish this new uh, startup activity of uh, Deloitte US and Israel, with the main aspiration of helping Deloitte's largest clients to tap into the Israeli ecosystem and try right. to uh, find not only the best companies, but the right, right way to solve business issues through investments, acquisitions, and deployments. And we've done quite similarly to what I do now, activities with the uh, Deloitte's largest clients, and we hosted C-suite of, of Fortune 100. And we were divided, our, our team was divided into pro, like uh, sectors. So people, uh, one guy was the domain manager in terms of mobility and FinTech and retail and uh, healthcare. And we had uh, a lot of very talented uh, team members that were focusing on each domain. And we basically helped uh, really big clients uh, understand how they can uh, utilize exactly the, the Israeli tech uh, uh, to, to solve their uh, biggest issues. And through, I think, the two and a half years uh, that of my tenure there, we were uh, privileged to do to execute more than uh, 80 global projects. We, I think, wow. uh, helped multinationals realize that they're not only interested in, in deploying a certain technology or, or, or potentially investing in a company, but rather opening an R&D center or, or an innovation hub in Israel. So companies like TD Bank and others uh, were good examples. And yeah, it was a great, great time. And, and it, got, it helped me to realize how uh, fascinating this job could be. At the time, I was a service provider, essentially. So I was not making, calling the shots, right? But I was helping, I was trying, or our team was trying to uh, support these uh, decision makers in, in, sure. in taking big changes and, sh and shifting mindsets and, and helping them uh, solve the, their biggest issues through Israeli technologies. I love it. I love it. And Hadar, so talk to me a little bit about this. Um, the, the, some of the struggles of a, of a large corporation to go and integrate uh, you know, POCs and software from, from early uh, or middle stage startups. So one of the things you mentioned that you're, that, that you're very excited about is helping large enterprises realize the potential of the outside ecosystem and uh, in sort of uh, amending some of the things that the company wants or needs, right? So instead of developing internally, going to see, okay, is there maybe a startup that can help us do that and make that connection? What are some of the difficulties or some of the opportunities that you're seeing within that realm? So the difficulties, I think, are quite uh, obvious. So organizations uh, work much, much, much slower right. um, in comparison to startups that every day, the, 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 it's a roller coaster. So in one month, you can, you can pivot twice, you can raise a, a lot of funds, you can uh, expand the team or decrease the amount of the team, the FTEs by, by I don't know what. And... Basically, startups can't really afford to have uh, two months of execution of an NDA prior to even uh, seriously discussing a potential collaboration, right? So I think one of a big issue is to, or not issue, but uh, one of our roles is to, is to try to expedite processes, uh, to try to help their, an organization understand that the they need to be a bit more agile in their mindset. How does that happen actually though? Do you actually go, so do you go to the senior vice president and say, listen, you're now, you're now dealing with a startup. It's not another business, like get moving or how, how do you actually expedite the process for this? Yeah. So it's quite delicate because we can't be super, super duper Israeli. We can't push <laughs> uh, after meeting maybe 10 emails because they would not be very appreciative of that. Uh, but we definitely try to, uh, do it to, to get uh, things done as fast as we can 
to be very, uh, I don't know, uh, supportive and, uh, and, and respective of the time of, of a company that, uh, right. that a startup that cannot afford too much time. And this is one major issue. A lot of other things are cultural differences. You know, sometimes the Israelis are uh, very upfront and, and, and there are other things that uh, and not every organization or, or type of people is confrontational as Israelis. And, and there are a lot of other differences that we try to uh, mitigate or try to, you know, bridge. Um, yeah. There are a bunch of other topics. I don't know. Um, I'm sure. I don't know. I think, I th- you know, I think it's just fascinating. Government. Just, you know, considering this, and I think what's, what's really fascinating is that the, where we're headed, and I'm seeing this constantly here, this idea that, uh, you know, the world is changing so, so fast. A lot of these businesses, uh, you know, you can look at COVID coming in. And I, a great example is my, one of my best friends has a startup in Tel Aviv. COVID hit, and he's in the travel space. COVID hit, basically crushed his business, had to, you know, forego a third to a half of his employees. And he was able to pivot within 24 hours and go to a whole new route. And he actually built something that over a quarter of a million people use right now to help decide where to travel. On the same note, you have large Is companies. it Mickey, your friend? Yeah, Mickey. Okay, there you go. Yeah, and Mickey Israel. We know everybody. So hi, hi Mickey. Point. Um, so, and uh, on the other end, you have large corporations which are getting COVID and now they have to decide how long do we wait until we make that pivot? How much are we, how much are we considering this? How much pivoting can we do once we've already settled down and we have this core business opportunity? And if we want to pivot, can we do it fast enough internally or do we want to utilize a startup outside to do that? So I think it's all really fascinating questions because I think COVID was just an example of, of, of circumstances that are going to cause huge consumer shifts and market shifts. And we're just getting, you know, the knock on the head of, okay, maybe, maybe we have to be a little bit more agile as a world than, than we were before. And all right, I can't believe 20 minutes are, are almost up. It, it always Seriously, are you real? <laughs> I have to ask the most important question. I need three words that you would best describe yourself or that any of your colleagues or any of the startups you invested in, they would describe Hadar. So it's hard because I don't like talking too much about myself and uh, I like to give, uh, uh, I don't know. Just for the record, I'm forcing you to say this. This is not your choice. (laughs) Okay, okay, so I'll do it. I think the first word would be uh, doer. So I try to get you done. I'm very pragmatic and trying to push stuff forward. Uh, Second thing, I think uh, it correlates to what I said before. So I'm very passionate, whether it's uh, with respect to my work, to Ezra, to innovation to uh, helping people stuff like that uh, maybe Hillel could say some words about that um, and the third word would be uh, connector so through my job and also on my um, just uh, time off I'd like to uh, not only connect internally with people but connect with other people and uh, just connection that. and then people uh, something that I do on a on a daily basis. Yeah. I love it. Hadal, Tadagaba, thank you very, very much. Uh, awesome. that incredible. And I, and I look forward to meeting in Israel after this whole Corona thing is over. Definitely. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much.